Okay, the bill for the bike repair costs $105 for the part and $25 per hour for labor. How much will it cost if the repair takes four and a half hours? So, you could probably solve this without all the algebra stuff, but I'll just show it in case if you did it, I wouldn't count it against you. So, you've got dollars and hours. Hours is X, dollars is Y. So, it's dollars per hour. And the dollars per hour is 25. 25 times x. 25 dollars times x. So this is a linear function. Okay. So linear. Linear stands for line. Okay. So we get the line by making our table. So hours is x, and dollars is y. Okay. So the hours begin at zero. They go jump to one and two. So we started at 105 dollars. Then we're adding $25 every hour. So that takes me up, bumps me up to 130 plus 25. That's 155. Then that goes on and on and on. And we need to just find out how much money there would be if this went down to four and a half hours, 4.5. Okay, so we are equal to Y here. And we have 105 at the beginning. And then we are adding $25 every hour. Okay. So there's my equation. So 105 plus 25 times x equals y. And then 4.5 goes in for x. x equals 4.5. So I put 4.5 in for x, okay? And now it was 25 times x, but now it's 25 times 4.5. So I want to figure out what 25 times 4.5 now is, okay? It's not x, okay? That's 112.5. Okay, so we have 105. Quit putting X on that when you do that. X is gone. Equals Y. And then we'll just combine those together, and that solves for Y quite easily. Okay. 105 plus 112.5, it's going to be $217.50. So 217.50, and that is how much money you would have right there, okay? Okay, a little jumbled order this time. A juggler tosses a ball into the air. The ball leaves the juggler's hand four feet above the ground with an initial upward velocity of 40 feet per second. The juggler catches a ball when it falls back to a height of three feet. How long is the ball in the air? Okay, so we have feet and seconds, x is seconds, y is feet, then per, feet per second. Now the feet per second is 40, 40 times x, but you remember what goes up comes down, so it would not be linear, okay? This would be a quadratic, because that's what you have when you have up and down. Something goes up, must come down, that's gravity. So gravity is equal to negative 16x to the second. Now, in a quadratic equation, you want to make the parabola graph. Okay. So it started at 4 feet, and it ended at 3 feet. Okay. So that's a little bit different than we're a little used to. So we set the x second, the x, the constant, equals y. So negative 16 is your x second, 40 is your x. 4 is your constant, okay? And this 3 feet at the end goes in for y. So 3 feet replaces the y. Now some of you are like, oh, I got x second and x. Well, I know I have to use the factoring properties for that. And then there's uh, two answers. But in order to use factoring properties, you need the 0 over there. So you need to take out that 3, and I'm pretty sure we can put that with the 4, okay? That's, that's not divided by, okay? It's 4 minus 3. So negative 16, 40, 4 minus 3 is 1. Now you have your trinomial. You can tell by looking at it that the T chart is probably going to turn into a QF, but we'll go with it. 
since there's no x on the end, there's a negative in front, it'd be negative 1. Okay, so I'll factor that out. So 16x second minus 40x minus 1. So the negative 1 will go here. And then this will be my ABC. But 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. So that's a mismatch. A positive times a negative. And right away, and you have to add it to try to get to negative 40. 1 and 16, you add those, that's negative 15. You're never going to get hot. You're, you're, you're too narrow already, so that's a quadratic formula. So, opposite of b, opposite of b, plus or minus d square root, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac over 2a, over 2a. So, opposite of b is positive 40. Then b to the second, that's going to be negative 40. a is 16, c is negative 1, and a is 16. Okay. So this is useless now. Okay. So 40 is useless even if you can get parentheses. 2 times 16 is 32. Now you evaluate your square root. So you put negative 40 to the second power minus 4. 16, negative 1, okay, 1,664. So find the square root of 1,664, and you get 40.79. So that's what we bring down here. So I take a 40 plus 40.79 and then divide by 32, and that's 2.52. And we take the 40 and subtract 40.79, click equals, divide by 32, that's negative 0 0.02, and 2.52 is your seconds. Okay. Okay, a town's population is decreasing by about 4% each year. That means per year. A town currently has 4,000 people. After how many years will the population be down to 2,500 people? I should have wrote people there, sorry. Okay, so we've got people and years. People is a function of the years. So years is X, people is Y. So per, we would go people per year. Okay, the people per year, well, there's no people per year, it's a percent per year. So it's by a percent, a rate of change is a percent, 4%. Well, that's an exponent function now. It just goes down, 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 but it's an exponent. It level out at zero, obviously. So, so it's an expo function. Well, anytime we have an expo, we need to identify what the exponent factor is. Okay, so this is a decay factor because it's decreasing, so we need to take 100% and subtract the 4%, and that's 96%. So you move the decimal twice to the left, and that's 0 0.96, okay? Okay, now you can make a table if you want. You really could skip to the a times b to the x power if you wanted to, too. But if the table suits you, that's fine. So x is years, y is people. So 0, 1, 2. Now we started this at 4,000 people. Then we multiply by our factor, 0 0.96. Since I'm multiplying by something less than 1, it's going to go down. 3,480, or 840, my bad. 0 0.96. Okay, 3,686.4, so 3,686. And that's good enough. Now I put the 2,500 that I have at the end, that's for the people. And I have to find how many years that took to get to 2,500, at least approximately to it. So an exponent function means we have a times b to the x power equals y. So I'm going to put a 
B, X, and Y over here. Remember, A and Y stand for the same thing, okay? They both stand for people. Y is people, and so is A. A is where the people began at, which is 4,000. And Y is the amount of people we ended with, which we have. We have 2,500. Just reading the problem, I can see that, okay? Now, the B is your exponent factor, 0 0.96, and the X is years. Well, we don't have the years, okay, because it's a question mark. That's what I'm solving for. So that stays X. So now, instead of A times B to the X power, we're going to have 4,000 times 0 0.96 to the X power equals 2,500. Okay, so now you're solving for x, okay? But x is a power, okay? So there's only one answer to it. Now, if you have an x, a power x, what you want to first, you want to parenthesize the power and its base. Just don't multiply those. You can't multiply those. 4,000 is not to the x power. 0 0.96 is, so you should not be multiplying. You need to parenthesize the x and its base, and you are going to apply the change of base formula. Okay. Now, before I go to my change of base formula, that outside operation needs to be divided. Okay. We need to undo the times 4,000 with division by 4,000. So 0 0.96 to the x power. 2,500 divided by 4,000 It's going to be 0 0.625. All right, now we apply the change of base formula. Circle your exponent, and that x is equal, whatever the exponent is, log over log. Now remember, the base, this is your base, okay? Base, it goes on the bottom, so 0 0.96. And then the product, 0 0.625, goes on top. Okay? So I take the log of 0 0.625 divided by the log of 0 0.96, I got 11.51, okay? So it'd be 11.51 years, okay? So it's somewhere I'd get to 2,500, somewhere between the 11 and the 12. Okay, next one. Sports equipment store is having a sale on soccer balls and soccer bags. A coach purchases 10 soccer balls and two bags for $155. The balls cost $9.50 more than the bags. Calculate the cost of each item. So we got balls, bags, and dollars. So that makes a system then. I have three units like that. So I make my system grid. So you have together... And what are you buying together? The balls and the bags. Probably better not put B and B so you get them mixed up. Now, how many units per unit in total? So money total, money per unit. Okay, so you have $155 for your total amount together. <laughs> okay, how many units? Well... Again, these are your money amounts, the tops for how many units. So we know we bought 10 balls and 2 bags, so you add those together, it's 12. Okay. Now, the cost per unit. Now, we have this $9 more than. That means plus $9.50. When one's plus $9.50 compared to the other. So we only wrote, need one variable. We can write both the unknowns in terms of the same variable. So only X, okay, or any variable you want, I guess. Okay. And then there's only going to be one equation. Okay, so we put plus $9.50 for balls, because balls cost more than, than bags. Okay, so X plus 9.50, and that's X. This is not needed, because we know this, we know this. Now remember, X plus 9.50 is a quantity, and we need to multiply the 10, okay, times a quantity, not just by X. It's got to be 10 times a quantity to 9.50. Well, then you distribute, okay? Well, 10 times X is 10X. 10 times 9.50 is 95. So that's 10X plus 95. 
Okay, then you take 2 times x. So 2 times x is 2x. Okay, so line that up. 10x plus 95 plus 2x equals 155. Okay, then you combine your x's to 12x plus 95 equals 155. Then we have multiplication by 12 and plus 95. So we would subtract 95, and that's 60. Then you would divide each side by your 12, and you'd get 5. So x is 5. So here's the x. So there's the x all by it. Find the box where the x is all by itself alone. And that means the bags cost $5. Now the ball cost, well we know X is still 5, 5 plus $9.50 is $14.50. Okay, a recreation center charges non-members $4 to use the pool and $5 to use the basketball courts. A person pays $42 for 12 trips to the facilities. How many times did they use each facilities? Again, you're going to need a system grid because you got the times you went to the pool, the times you went to the basketball courts, and dollars. Okay. Okay, so you have together how many units per unit in total. Okay. So you got the pool and the basketball courts. Pool, B ball. Okay, well, $42 is your amount together, the total cost. You put your money. Okay. Okay, as far as how many? Well, you got 12. Okay, so that's 12 together. So, X plus Y then would equal 12. Now, you can use P and B if you want to, but we, these are unknown. We need two different variables. There's your first equation. Okay, so maybe it's 8 and 4. Maybe it's 10 and 2. Maybe it's 6 and 6. Maybe it's 11 and 1, you know. That's why we have the cost. So you have $4 for the pool and then $5 for the basketball course. So, we take X times 4. And that's just 4x because we don't know x. And y times 5. So it's 5y. Okay, so there's a system. Put those on top together. And we know that x plus y would equal 12. And then 4 times x plus 5 times y would equal 42. Okay, we have to apply elimination is what I would do. There is a way you can do substitution, but it's a lot more complicated. So you times by 4, times by 1, times the rest of this by 4, rest of this by 1. So 4x plus 4y equals 48. Okay. Then the bottom, 4x plus 5y equals 42. And I mess this problem up because this is going to be pretty much impossible. That means I wrote this wrong. Okay. Tell you what, switch that 5 to a 3. We'll see how that works. Okay. So let's put a 3. So it'd be 3y. Three okay. Hopefully a lot better than 5 would have because I'd have got a negative answer, which we know can't be right. This should be better. Okay. Okay, that makes 0x. That's going to be 1y. And then 48 plus negative 42 is 6. So you don't really need to divide by 1. Y would equal 6. Okay, so 6 visits to the basketball courts. Well, what plus 6 is 12? Come on, okay? Probably 6. So X is going to equal 6. 6 plus 6 is 12, okay? Okay, next one. This one's a treat. I currently owe the bank money for a loan. I pay it back the same amount each month, okay? After 24 months, I still owe $38,360. After 48 months, I still owe $26,720.
How many months would it take to pay off this loan? Now, when I say pay off the loan, that means from the time that I borrowed all the money, not from the 48 months, okay? I'm well aware that's four years, yeah. Probably could have, probably should have put two years and four years, but just go with it, okay? Because, you know, 24 months is two years, 48 months is four years. Might have been better to do that, but can't now. So months and dollars, X is months, Y is dollars. So per dollars per month. We don't know the dollars per month, but it flat out says it's the same amount of money every month. So this is linear, okay? When we don't have that, we put M. And then so I, I make a line, okay? I still make a line, but then I make my table a little bit differently than I did on the very first problem here today. So months is X, money is Y. So I can't go 0, 1, 2. I'm not in a position to do that. So instead I block it and say, what else do I know? I know 24 months goes with $38,360. I know that 48 months goes with $26,720. Okay. Zero dollars. Well, that's what you're trying to figure out right there. Okay. Okay, so obviously we started at somewhere higher than 38,000, so we call that B. So I put B, and I wasn't really adding every time, so I put M times X equals Y. It's like Y equals M times X plus B backwards, okay? Okay, well, we need to find the M, so I come over here, and that's where I apply my M formula, my slope, Y minus Y, X minus X. Okay, we start with our higher x value, which should be 48. Put the value 26,720 over it. And then 38,360 minus 24. Okay, 48 minus 24 is 24. And you take 26,720 minus 38,360, negative 11,640. And you divide those, and you get negative 485. So that's your M. Negative 485 times X, and it's dollars. Okay. So if you went zero, if you went by ones, which we're not even close to, you would be going down 485. You'd be minusing 485 all the way down, or adding the negative. Okay. So my M is negative 485. So the B then I use my Y equals M times X plus B. So my M, I have negative 485. And then we're for X and Y. Go to your table. So X is 24. Y is 38,360. Okay. So 38, 360, and then you're going to times by 24. B plus. Negative 485 times uh, 24 is going to be negative 11,640. Now add that on, and that's your beginning amount. Okay, that's actually um, 50,000, 50,000 even. That's not your answer, that's where you started at, okay? Your B is 50,000. Okay, 50,000 plus negative 485 times X equals Y. Okay, all right, then we replace Y with 0. Y equals 0. Okay, now we're solving for x. That should be an easy solve. It's just linear properties because you have x only. So you got plus and times. So you're going to minus the 50,000. Then you divide by negative 485. Negative 50,000 divided by negative 485. 
Uh, put 103. That's fine. 103 is good enough. So yeah, 103 months. So it'd be 103. If you wanted to convert that to years, you divide by 12, be about nine years. Okay. All right, then the last one. An online music store sells 4,000 songs each day when it charges $1 per song. For each five cent increase in price, 80 fewer songs per day are sold. They will raise revenue for a while, but there comes a point where the revenue starts to go down because keep in mind less people than would be buying. After how many price changes should the store stop changing the price? What will the maximum revenue be? Okay, maximum. You don't need all that analysis. This is a maximum. Okay, it's a quadratic equation, but you're finding the top point, the vertex point. So it's a formula to find that. I mean, it's a coordinate point. Okay, it'd be um, opposite of B divided by 2 times A. Okay, so we know that this is a quadratic equation, so it has to involve X to the second power. Plus something X plus something equals Y. Now this Y here is your revenue. Okay. Okay, how do you get to revenue? Well, you take the money you charge times the number of items that you sell. Okay. Okay, so dollars items. Okay, so the dollar started at one, and then four thousand is your items. Okay, then you increase by five cents. But then when you do that, you then decrease by 80, okay? Because if you raise the price, less people buy. Vice versa, if you lower the price, more people would buy. Okay, so $1.05, and then that'd be 3920 And then $1.10, 3840 okay? So you started at a dollar, and you started at 4000 but then you're adding five cents. We don't know how many five cents we're adding, so x, and then we're minusing 80x. Okay, now to get from here to here, you have to apply your FOIL procedure. Okay, so one times 4,000, one times negative 80x, 0.05x, times 4,000, and then 0.05x times negative 80x. So this is 4,000, this is negative 80x, this is x, that's going to be 200. And x times x is x to the second. Then multiply those, it's going to be negative 4. Okay, so your negative 4 is your x to the second. That's your a coefficient. Then you add your b's, negative 80 plus 200 is 120. That's your b. And then 4,000 becomes our c. Okay, opposite of b, so it's negative 120. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So I divide those, that's 15. So that's 15 changes in price. So that what that means, a 15, it's not the answer, but what it means is after we list that initial amount, we would make 15 rows after before we finally got to our maximum revenue. Because you see, 1 times 4,000 is a revenue of 4,000. $1.05 times 3,920 is 4,116. So it obviously went up. And then a dollar ten times three eight four zero keeps going up. Well, I'd have to go down fifteen rows before I find the maximum point. So then fifteen then replaces the x. Okay. Okay. So I plug that in. Okay, 4,900 equals Y. Okay. 